supposedly going off without a hitch. So he did a lot of research and found that instead of 34%, actually 60% of Dr. Marcos's patients suffered life-threatening complications um, and had to obtain pa um, patient consent in order to have any of the findings he found um, published or used in any kind of lawsuit. Um, what this meant was that he had to go back and get all of the patients who he had used their information from and have them sign a waiver so that he could basically use um, their information. He reviewed the 121 transplants that UPMC had done involving removal of a living donor's right lobe of their kidney, um, which usually grow regenerates because um, they're healthy. And um, Dr. Starzl's findings also showed that the living donors that were supposedly not going through any complications were actually getting sick and their livers were not regenerating as quickly as everyone thought they had. And also the patients who had gotten the healthy people's livers were like having complications with the grafts and their bile was leaking and that's not good at all. Um, the resolution that UPMC decided to go with was um, to ask Dr. Marcos to resign and he did so in March of 2007. Um, the quote that they used in the paper was that he did give himself and the university a very large black mark, and UPMC had to make amends for all of the bad publicity that Dr. Mark was hitting them, as well as gain back the trust of all of their patients. Any questions? Um, was it worth it to use the expanded criteria donors, even though it did put the people at risk? Dr. Marcos defended the fact that 50 patients die each year at UPMC. So because he did that, he did save those lives. However, when you weigh the fact that, you know, 69% of the people were healthy in the first, healthy, considered healthy in the first place,